So the expedition to go and dive uh, Loch Corion Lochen in the Cane Gomes came about by accident really. The initial plan was to dive Loch Etchian, um, but after some research and chatting to some people and seeing Shane Wazick's um, video, it turns out that actually the highest um, water body in the UK is um, Loch Corion Lochen. So the plan was to go and dive it and obviously it's been dived before so I wanted to do something different so therefore I decided a winter dive where it was under the ice would be a bit more challenging uh, and a bit more of an endeavour. Having had quite a lot of experience running expeditions it's very important to me that I make sure I get a team around me who can support me. When I was choosing uh, the team members to come with me on the expedition I narrowed it down based on skill sets and also the fact that I got on with these people and I could spend time with them and under the stress, under pressure um, and that we wouldn't you know basically do each other's heads in and we could get on with the task at hand. So the team consisted in the end of um, myself, um, Adam Wedgbury, um, John Taylor and Laura Chisholm and everyone brought their own unique skill sets to that trip. Loch Cardion Lochen is about 15 kilometres from the nearest um, roadhead and so what we did we parked at the Sugar Bowl um, in the Cairngorms um, National Park just north of Loch Molech and um, the reason we did that is actually the, the trail is slightly easier underfoot um, and with a lot of big loads which we had to carry up to make the expedition successful it just seemed a better and easier option of route in and out. Another person who's going to join us on the team was Mike Bushell from the BBC. Um, Mike's a BBC TV sports presenter um, and he's got holds the world record for trying and attempting the most sports by any one person. Mike was going to join the expedition and he was going to come along and um, dive the lake with us. However, due to restrictions in the end, he was unable to dive with us. And we're hoping that Mike comes back with us in 2022 and we'll go back and dive it again. So to do an expedition like this, clearly we've got to train. One of our first training trips was um, the ascent of Helvellyn via Striding Edge. This was an excellent trip and this was wrapped up with a, an altitude dive, the highest lake in, in England called Red Tarn. In the winter of 2020-2021, um, um, we moved up to Loch Inch in the Scottish Islands and we spent a few weeks ice diving and preparing ourselves um, for diving under the ice and being able to work in extreme cold conditions. Um, this was excellent um, training, great opportunity to develop um, and to practice all the skills we would need to succeed in this expedition. Another training exercise we did um, was big days out in the mountains carrying big loads um, in snow and ice conditions and poor visibility so that as a team we could um, practice working together under pressure um, and within the same environment um, as we were going to be visiting in Scotland. In addition to the team training lots of individual training took place with everybody getting out and doing their own thing um, to, in order to build up the physical and mental endurance required to succeed in this expedition. Once we'd completed all our training and everybody was happy and we believed we were ready to go we relocated to Scotland again and we based ourselves in the Britannia Coilum Bridge Hotel um, where we ran the expedition for three days. Day one, we're halfway up, pretty cold. Kit's pretty heavy. 
um, and everyone's doing all right. But um, hopefully be up there in another hour and a half. At this point, disaster struck, and in John's own words, this is what happened. I was unable to take part in the diving after doing the walking most of the morning, or most of the day. Um, that's because at the towards the very end of the hike, I unfortunately slipped on one of the rocks, didn't quite have the footing that I was hoping for, and slip, uh, as I say, slipped and popped my knee out. I luckily popped back in uh, during the same accident, uh, fortunately enough, uh, so I was able to sort of strap my knee back up with the help of Laura, our first, aid, uh, first aider on the uh, trip, and I was able to hobble down uh, the side of the mountain uh, with a busted up knee, uh, but I was able to safely make it back down to the bottom. So after four hours of walking, we finally made it to Loch Corrie on Lochen. Um, part of it has begun to defrost, but there's plenty of ice over the loch, um, which means we can do our ice diving. So we're gonna drop off our loads today, um, and then we'll be back tomorrow to do the actual diving. So just finished day one, carried um, three loads of 25 kilos up to the dive site. Um, left that there now ready for tomorrow. Um, we just got back, it's half past six in the evening. As you can see, it's got dark. Um, go home, get a good sleep, back out tomorrow for day two. It's the morning of day two. We're just about to set off from the bottom of, bottom of Rothimukas uh, Forest. And we're going to head up to uh, Loch Corrie on Lochen for the second time. But we've got big loads again today and the plan is to get up there and do our diving, which would be awesome. And then try and clear the mountain of as much stuff as we can at the end of the day. So here goes. Two kilometres into the journey today. Um, conditions are way different from yesterday. It's actually scorching hot. 
Um, so we're sweating, the sun's out beating down on us. Um, the shelter of these trees is absolutely a blessing at the moment um, and it's already hard work but we persevere and we're going to crack on. So we've just arrived at um, Loch Corrie and Lochen and um, there's been a little bit of a thaw overnight so around the edges of the lake it's began to thaw up and uh, melt which is absolutely fine because it means we don't have to cut a hole it makes life a bit easier but as you can hopefully see behind me the majority of the lake is still well and truly frozen so that makes access a lot easier um, regrettably we carried a chainsaw up to cut the ice uh, but clearly we're not going to need that today so we're here and we're going to get this done. How are you feeling right now, bud? <laughs> Why are you so close to the ground? <laughs> back to the van so we're going to leave kit here and then tomorrow we'll pop up and get the last bits of stuff if we try and do it today we'll probably injure ourselves and it's just not worth the risk so it was a long walk day two was um, but it was worth it we managed to get our dive in and we were happy with what we achieved. 
So the last day of our expedition um, to Loch Codion Lochen um, was relatively une uneventful. We started off hiking up um, to where we dumped the kit the day before. Once we got there, we put it into manageable loads. After picking up the kit from the kit cache, and we headed back down the mountain. As we came back down, the sun had been out for most of the day by now and melted the snow. So it was soft and there was snow bridges that we had to get across over some of the streams. And so it made quite an eventful descent. Um, so this is the story of that. just coming off the mountain it took us two and a bit hours to get up this morning to do the the walk up with no packs and now we've loaded up the final pack 15 kilos each and we're heading off the mountain so hopefully well we'll be clear of the mountain today missions complete Here we have the cock knocker Adam, <laughs> up to his nuts in snow. I got cold nuts. <laughs> and there we have the great crested Laura, also up to her knees in snow. 